Okay, here we are uh, calibrating S meters again. Uh, another local ham came over uh, the other night and wanted to uh, use my expertise and my equipment to calibrate and do a full alignment on his older ICOM 735. A uh, little tedious, but one of the big uh, challenging steps was calibrating the S meter because the S meter requires 50 microvolts of uh, RF signal on the antenna terminal, and that is really small. And uh, the scope can't rely, my new scope can't reliably read down that low, but my signal, my new signal spectrum analyzer certainly can. The issue I was having, or we were having, is I didn't have a, a, a step attenuator. I only have fixed attenuators, 10 dBs, or just the one actually. And uh, <clears throat> the newer Siglent function generator uh, didn't go down that low. It only went down to, I think, uh, 0.7 millivolts, uh, which was still too high to achieve uh, 50 microvolts on the output. But since John went home, I thought about the next morning. And I did order a nice step attenuator, used one on eBay. It's not here yet. But one of the things we were complaining about, who's that? Somebody's there. Uh, KK7ZR videoing. Who's that? Somebody's whistling. All right. Uh, so I, I bought all these new scope probes, the cheap ones, and I hate them. They all roll off after about uh, 10 megahertz, uh, 7, 8, 10 megahertz. So if you're trying to get to 14 megahertz, attenuation is really, really low. Just kind of torque me off for a scope probe. You want to know that if it's marked... 100 megahertz. Some of these are marked 200 megahertz, and at uh, 14, 10 to 14 megahertz, 20 megahertz, you're uh, you're down 10 b or 10 dB or better. So that's like no good. Next morning, I thought, well, I just use that to my advantage. If we do it in reverse, if we have natural attenuation, then we can use that as our attenuator. It doesn't really matter what the uh, loss is, because I have variable amplitude, as long as it's within the range, to give me uh, 50 microvolts. Uh, of RF here, then we're good to go for testing the signal strength or S meter stuff. Also, another thing we found out, or I found out after doing John's uh, alignment, and I guess I knew this, I just didn't think about that, is every load. Oh, this goes to antenna two of my Kenwood uh, 890. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Is that every antenna input apparently has different impedance? They're not always 50 ohms, uh, but anyway, it's going to load down the uh, signal source uh, and I knew that I just didn't consider it so I'll show you here so if I pull this out uh, if I can pull this out let me set this down Bang. okay so I pulled out the radio and so I'll describe what I have so I have the signal source here I'll get the glare out of the way so it's 14.1 uh, megahertz that's what uh, at least the ICOM wanted uh, that's the frequency the ICOM 735 wanted to be at AM and I set the amplitude to something that would give me, through the scope, scope uh, probe, I put it in reverse. These Tektronix scope probes have this really nifty adapter thing. Where is it? Here. Uh, here. That you stick on the end of the probe. That'll make uh, kind of a female BNC, or male BNC, I guess. Where you can stick right in there. And you don't need the little ground lead, so I pop that off. And... Uh, so I have that in there as a source. We're basically using it backwards. <clears throat> Didn't really seem to matter which direction it was. A little bit for the compensation, but we're not shooting square waves through, so we don't have to worry about it. So <clears throat> I have some attenuation here. And as you can see, this goes straight up with a relatively good piece of coax up to the signal generator or the spectrum analyzer. And you'll notice that it's pretty high. So it's flickering around, but that's about uh, 98 microvolts, almost 100 microvolts. And that's too high for 50. And that's what we were doing before. We would try to set some sort of attenuation for 50 microvolts unloaded. And then as soon as we put the radio on, we were expecting to see the S9. That was incorrect. Uh, apparently you need to I'll put this back in. You need to do it <coughs> with the radio in line. Because there's going to be some load and some attenuation, some pull down. It's going to pull that down. So what I did here, this goes to the radio right there. Antenna B. This is our signal source from that scope probe. <clears throat> some attenuation goes to a T, a BNC T, straight over to uh, the spectrum analyzer. <clears throat> and so what I did was I set the amplitude with that knob there so that I would achieve as close as I could get <clears throat> to 50 microvolts, as you see there. Flickering, I should look at it here. So 
So I got a marker there. And this uh, Spectrum Marine Lines is cool in that it has this peak detect button. It will actually, instead of rolling, I can roll the, the marker around with a knob like that. That doesn't do me no good because it dances around a little bit. But it's got this cool computerized peak function. Bam. It will find a peak. and put you right on there. So 49 to 51, depending on how this iPhone is picking up this blinking number. I'm calling that 50 microvolts, right? AM unmodulated. So we go over to our nice uh, 890 here. And I am tuned to 14100. And lo and behold, the S meter is not S9. It's S8. It's off one S unit. Not much, but it is off one S unit. I got to thinking, wow, you know, I should look at the uh, procedure for this. I'm trying to remember what John, KJ7OTO, had in his uh, alignment manual, his service manual for his old ICOM 735. We were sitting here reading it on a book, and I'm pretty sure he was going through and it said, no carrier, AM, and that's what we have here. Got to thinking about that this morning. It says, well, how many people actually do AM? And when we talk about S units on sideband or whatever, we're trying to give an RST report, are we actually reporting on dead carriers or some average modulation? He said, uh, modulation, even though I believe John's book said no modulation for this test, which is probably the right way to do it, uh, fundamentally, technically, that's just a dead carrier. If we're looking for RF signal units, uh, which is supposed to be, what, 6 dB per S unit, uh, then, yeah, this would be a little low. Uh, seems odd that a high-end radio like this would be low. I could download the service manual and uh, go tweak with pots inside of here bad idea. I thought, well, you know, what does that signal level look like if there were some modulation? And I need to figure out how this newer signaling function generator works. I watched a really cool YouTube video last night, and this thing is bitching. It has modulation modes that one can only dream of. So we're going to go through these menus here. So let me get the glare out of here. Oh, Jesus, light. I don't know if I just turn it off. Does that work? Uh, let's see, move some lights around here. Okay, sorry about the moving around. Hold an iPhone. So I'm going to hit the modulation button. Hello. And, Hello. and there we go. Listen. Hello. 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 One of the, uh, Hello. Let me turn this down. Hello. One of the many arbitrary uh, modulation modes, see that white signal there, is a whole can list of uh, different types of shapes. You can even make arbitrary ones with a computer. Or, but they have these built-in ones. So I say arbitrary here, and I say built-in, and look at all these ones. There's voice. I'm going to turn the speaker up on the radio so you can hear it. Hello. Hello. So I'm actually modulating Hello. my 14.1 megahertz Hello. carrier AM Hello. with Hello. these arbitrary Hello. settings. Hello. There's voice. Hello. There's TV, SCR, all these simulation type stuff. And... You can see what they're doing on the screen there, how they're modulating. SNR, signal noise ratio, just white noise. That's actually pretty useful, I think. Uh, I want to go through these real quick because I don't want to concentrate too much on this. Uh, but I want to show you page two, some other ones here. Uh, ripple. Uh, but also, let me go back to page one. Oops. Is uh, these things are only. Uh, <clears throat> Very useful, I think, is if you set the frequency. So you set the waveform type for the modulation, this arbitrary type. And if I go the built-in ones, and we went to go back to page one in the voice here, uh, is the frequency, the audio frequency rate of the modulation. So, uh, so if we do TV, I'm not going to do TV, but if I do TV and turn up the modulation, the AM frequency of that, it'll actually sound like a, a sweep. The uh, either 60 hertz, 60.5 vertical sweep of a of a old TV set, you know. Hello. And on voice, Hello. Uh, Hello. had trouble figuring this out. Hello. See, this voice Hello. is at Hello. AM frequency rate Hello. of 800. So if we go Hello. over to Hello. back to Hello. here, uh, how do I get there? I think Hello. I have to mod again. Hello. Well, AM depth Hello. is the modulation, so I have Hello. it 100%, but Hello. you have AM frequency, Hello. right? Hello. Now watch this. Hello. So listen, so I can move this. Hello. Hello. I'm gonna move this over here to go Hello. higher increments. Hello. 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 Now it sounds like a yap dog. 
That's pretty cool. Okay. Great. So she's come down off her helium. Uh, <clears throat> okay, we digress. <clears throat> So what I wanted to illustrate here, so I'm, I'm at 100% modulation, AM depth I assume is modulation. Uh, frequency for that particular arbitrary waveform is uh, 937 hertz. Putting this kind of in the audio uh, spectrum. But where I wanted to concentrate, and that's what this video is about, is the, the uh, S units. So the S unit now happens to be exactly on S9, which is what that 50 microvolts represents. So you can see on her voice peaks that it basically gets up to S9. And that's probably higher than 50 microvolts. Uh, this thing isn't reacting quick enough. I'd have to do one of these fancy slower sweep things so I could see it sweep up and sweep down. Uh, so my question is, is when they calibrate an S meter, is it really meant to be with no modulation? Because if I push and hold the modulation button, this will, this will shut it off right here. Okay, modulation is off. So we have a dead carrier and we're back to about 50 microvolts with my poor man's uh, attenuator, which is an old scope probe. All right, and then we look here and the meter is reading S8. So, that's somewhat disturbing. So, would that mean that if this was really calibrated correctly by the purest uh, procedure of making an S9 for 50 microvolts on the antenna input, then what happens with the modulation? So, if somebody starts talking, calling CQ, is all excited to hear Steve, KK7ZR, and he's bouncing my meter up to 9.5, if this dead carrier was set to 9, is that a true representation of signal strength? So when people give signal strengths on the radio, particularly sideband, what is it that that represents? I know that's a, it's kind of a relative number. It's nothing uh, precise. It's not really uh, a precision thing. So I just kind of brought this up, just bringing this up to the uh, people in the know to think about and discuss. So uh, I could check other radios but I'd like to learn more about it. It's interesting. I should have known this stuff 20, 30 years ago, but it's good to kind of have my second wind here in life on electronics with all the new equipment that I bought. Uh, so that's really cool. So we hit modulation. Hello. 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 She's hollowing up the Hello. storm. Hello. And we are Hello. close enough to S9. Hello. Hello. And uh, Hello. the question Hello. then becomes if I go to sideband, uh, what signal strength? Because look how that's different. So now if that was some lady calling CQ and saying hello from Canada or Brazil, <laughs> would I give her or he? Oh, I guess we're not allowed to say her or he nowadays. So would I give that person, air quotes, a signal uh, report of S5? Inquiring minds want to know. This one is getting on my nerves. Oh, or this thing, or... This, this synthesized voice is getting on my nerves. I'm going to turn it off. Bam. All right. Probably had enough of me shaking around, but uh, let me know what you all think of this. My email is good on my QRZ page. And here is uh, KK7ZR. 7-3 for now.